Alright, what's going on everyone? In this video, we'll be covering reactive data within Vue 3, the methods that you use to create that reactive data, and also what method may work best for you. So with the transition from Vue 2 to Vue 3, we were introduced something called the Composition API, and this changed the way that we create data as opposed to how we used to do it within the Options API using the data function. And how that used to look is we could have another script tag here, and then inside of here we want to do an export, and then we'll do a default, and then we would have our data function, and then we would return our data here. So we could return a data value called number let's see, number one like this, set equal to one. And if we wanted to output this uh, data value of number one inside of our template, all we'd have to do is we can go inside of our main tag here, we could use a paragraph tag, and then we could output number one like this, and we'd see it here inside of our browser. Now, when using the composition API, we no longer have access to this data function. So how do we create data when using the composition API? So it's actually as simple as creating a variable directly inside of your script tag here. And one thing that I want to mention too is that there is this setup attribute that you can use on your script tag where you don't explicitly have to uh, specify that you're using the setup function. So before what you'd have to do is something similar to this structure right here. And then after data, for example, you would define the setup function right here. And then you do all of your logic inside of here. But when using this setup attribute on the script tag, you actually don't need to define that. All right, so let's create our first uh, value of data here with the composition API. So we can say const and we'll do number two like this and set it equal to two. Now when also using the setup attribute on the script tag, we don't need to actually return this data here. It's automatically available to us to use inside of our template if we want to output it. So for example, if we now copy this down and we say, let's do uh, number two like this, we'll see that here inside of our browser. Okay, so now that we know how to create and use our data from the Composition API, one common thing that you do with view data is you update it. And when you do update it, you want to see that change reflected here inside of the browser. So for example, with our number data values here, we may want to increment them by one. So for example, we can create a button here and then we can say at click and we can do number one plus plus like this. And then inside of the button here, we'll just say increase. All right, so if we click on this button here, the value increases by one, which is what we'd expect. And this is referencing our data value from our data function within the options API. Now, if we do the same thing here, we copy this button and we paste it below our number two value. And instead of incrementing the number one value, we can say number two instead. So if we click on this button now, you can see that our number doesn't increment, it stays at two. Now, the reason why this happens, this one increases while this one doesn't increase, is because by default, the data that we define here within our data function is considered reactive, while the data that we created here inside of our composition API is not considered reactive. So the question is, how do we make this data reactive here? And we have two different methods we can use. We have one called ref and we have another one called reactive. And the first one we'll cover here is gonna be ref. So to make our data reactive using the ref method, we first want to import ref from view. So we'll say import and we'll do ref and we wanna import it from view here. All right, now to make this reactive using the ref method, we want to wrap our data value here inside of ref. So we'll do this like that. And now our data is considered reactive. So if we click on this button here to increase it now, you can see it's going to increase. Now, so far we've only covered a very simple example of updating our data, and we're doing that update directly here within our click handler. But what happens if we wanted to perhaps create a function and we wanted our function to handle updating our data value here? All right, so let's take a look at how we would handle that. So to demonstrate this, I will be creating a new variable or a new piece of data, and we're gonna call this person. And we'll set equal to a ref and then inside of here we'll have an object and we'll say name and we'll do John and then we'll also have an age and we'll say 24. Now just as a reference when we are using the ref method we can pass in here objects and arrays as well as a primitive value type as we do here with our number. Alright so just wanted to point that out. 
So now let's output this to our template here. So I'll create a paragraph tag and we'll say person.name and also person.age and we should see those here inside of our browser. Now, for example, let's create a button here and when we click on this button, we want to run a function. So we'll add a click handler and we'll run a function we're gonna create called update person and then we'll just do update person inside of here as the text content. All right, so now inside of our script tag, let's create this function. So we'll do const update person and then we'll set this equal to an arrow function here. Now, before we do any updating, I just want to log out to the console this object we have here of person. So we'll say console.log and then we'll do person. All right. Now, as you can see here, I have this value automatically appended to the end of our person here of dot value. And this is because I am using an extension called Valar. Now, for now, I want to disregard this and we'll come back to this in a few moments. But I just want to show you what happens if we uh, log out to the console here, just person. So now if we come over to our browser and we click inspect here and we'll probably need to make this a little bit bigger so we can see. And there we go. And if we click on console here, and if we click on this button, you can see we get this interesting return here when we log out person. So if we open this up here, you can see we have this value. And then if I click on this, you can see we have this proxy value. And if we open this up and we go inside of the target, we can then see the age and the name that we define here within our object. So what's happening here is when we use the ref method, it's actually wrapping our contents inside of this proxy. And to access that proxy value, we need to tack on the dot value to whatever we want to get a hold of. So for example, we have this person variable here. So to get the contents of it, we want to say dot value. And then if we click this button again, you can see we're then going to get the name and the age here. So if we want to update a value here inside of our object, we need to say person dot value and then the uh, property that we want to update. So for example, if we want to update the name here, we can say person dot value dot name and we'll set it equal to let's just do Scott. OK, so now if we click on update person here, you can see that the name is going to be changed to Scott. OK, so now that we have a basic understanding of how to create reactive data while using the ref method, let's take a look at the other method we have called reactive. Now, to begin using this, we also want to import it here from view. So we'll say reactive. Now, what we can do to demonstrate this is actually use a very similar example as we have here for our person. So what I'll do is copy this down and then let's change this to person two instead of person. And then instead of wrapping our object here inside of a ref, we want to change it to be reactive instead. And then we can also change the name here. We'll just say Tim and then we'll give him an age of 32. Now to use our reactive object here inside of our template, it's going to be the same exact way we did it with our ref object here. So what we can do is just copy this and then paste it here. And then we'll copy both of these. We'll say person two, and then we'll see that value displayed here inside of our browser. But we should also probably change this to Tim and not time. OK, so let's begin to take a look at how we can make an update here to our reactive object of person two. Now, very similar to how we've done it with our ref here, where we have a button and we click and we run a function. Let's do the same thing here for our reactive method. So what we'll do is we'll just copy and paste this in and we'll run a function called update person two. And then we'll just change the button here to update person two. All right. So then what we can also do is copy this function and what we'll do as well is just change to update person to like this. OK, now when it comes to making a change to a piece of reactive data using the reactive method, we no longer have to reference this dot value property on the properties that we're trying to update here. We have direct access to those now when using the reactive method. So we can remove this dot value here and we can just specify person two dot name and set equal to whatever we want, as opposed to how we had to do it when using the ref method where we had to say person dot value and then the property. All right. So if we save this and come over here to our browser, if we click on update person two, you can see we're now able to change the name from Tim to Tom. So now that we've had the opportunity to explore and use both of these methods, which one is the best and what one should you be using to create reactive data? 
Now at first glance you may think that the reactive method here is your preferred choice because when you use a ref you have to use this dot value property. When we use the reactive method we have direct access to the properties we don't need to use this dot value property here. Now, however this is an advantage, there is also drawbacks and limitations to using the reactive method. And the first one is that the type cannot be primitive. And what I mean by that is if we, for example, take this uh, variable here called number two and we copy it down and say three, and we change the value to three here and we make this a reactive, this will not work because the number three here is primitive and you can't have the type of primitive when using a or using the reactive method. So for example here if we were to try to output this and we say let's do number three here, we will see this value here inside of our browser but we should be getting an error because it should warn us that we can't have this as a reactive value because it cannot be a primitive type. Now another limitation while using the reactive method is that you're unable to do any reassigning. So for example, if we wanted to reassign this whole entire object to person 2, we're unable to do that. So if we try this out here inside of our update uh, person 2 function where we say person 2 and we set equal to an entire new object here. So we'll say name, we'll do Jim, give him an age, we'll say 35 and we'll also add a weight here and we'll do 150. So if we save this right away, we're actually going to get an error here inside of our view application saying that we're unable to do that. Now, however, we can actually reassign data that was made using the ref method here. So if we remove this here, so I'll copy this and then remove it from our function and we'll get rid of that error. So we can actually reassign data using the ref method here. So we can say person, dot value and set it equal to an entire new object and this will be accepted. So if we change or click this button here now, you can see that's going to update. All right, so those are some of the main drawbacks and limitations to using the reactive method versus the ref method. Now, one other drawback I forgot to mention is that if you are creating what they call composable functions, which are simply just reusable logic, when using the reactive method, the data will lose reactivity where the ref method will not. So as you can see, there's quite a few limitations to using the reactive method. So a majority of the time, I am personally opting to use the ref method. However, I do believe there are situations where the reactive method is going to be a good choice. It's mainly going to depend on the situation. So there's definitely a lot of debate when it comes to which method you should use in the view community, but hopefully after watching this video, you now have a better understanding of reactive data within view and the methods that we use to make that data reactive. So that's going to wrap it up for the video here, guys. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like on it down below. If you guys aren't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe for more content like this. And I will see you guys in the next one.